Hey everybody, Zach again, NewTutor.com, coming in making a video for you today. So why am I making all these videos in the car? Well, it's because I have all kinds of things going on where I have to take Jamie to places, we have to do, it's like, it's, it, it's harder than ever for me to make videos these days. And so my, my choices are either don't make the videos or um, make them while I'm here and my I'm out of my I'm out of my element <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that here so I thought I'd make a video on wine kind of um, I wanted to share a couple of things number one uh, my friends uh, Chris uh, over at Shalom Makers some of you guys have watched that YouTube channel Shalom Makers he has his two two old, older children with him and they're in Israel right now and they're doing the high Yovel experience uh, doing some work for Hayavel in that ministry over there. I have talked about them off and on throughout some videos in the past, and I really um, enjoy that ministry. I think what they're doing is very good, and uh, I love the fact that they're working in the vineyards over there in Judea, and I just, man, if I could... What, circumstances have just not allowed me to take part in that adventure yet, and uh, I really want to do that. I would really like to do that. Maybe when my boys are older... Uh, we can go do that uh, as a family. That'd be great. Um, but so Chris is over there right now enjoying that experience. Uh, we've had other friends of ours throughout uh, the years who've done that. And uh, they just have an amazing amount of stories to tell when they come back. Uh, so many great testimonies are shared over there. And so uh, I'm looking forward when Chris gets back and he can share some of that. People are often asking me because I know that me and Chris are friends. And me and Chris actually share a lot in common, uh, just an amazing amount of things in common. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we're good friends. And so he uh, is going, he is um, over there now. He's coming back. When he comes back, uh, people are always asking me, you know, is he going to start making videos again for Shalom Makers? And I don't know what the answer is for that. He knows that people are asking for him to do that, uh, mostly because so many of his videos had just a wealth of knowledge uh, in them. And so... Um, people really kind of miss but he you know he's like me he's got a lot of irons in the fire and, and so it's harder for him to make videos hard for me to make videos sometimes and so that's why I'm making a video in my car while I'm in the city uh, instead of um, in my studio which is actually my bedroom uh, at home anyway all that said I'm looking forward to hearing what he says about Hayavel and his experience so I'm going to include he, he sent me an email today actually his wife forwarded it to me and I'm gonna go ahead and post that in the description below the link for Hayavel if you're if you're into wine and you'd like to taste really good wines from uh, the, the hills and valleys of Judea uh, there is a way you can do that and so I'm gonna share that I'm not they're not paying me to make a promotion for Hayavel or anything like that. it's just a ministry that I believe in I think they do good work and um, uh, so I want to include that link below if you're interested and you like good wines check that link out you can participate and enjoy some of those uh, amazing wines and I'm definitely going to do that at some point. I like, I've, I've been a member of certain wine clubs over the years, um, you know, when, when money allows me to do that. And so the next time that comes up, I will participate in Hayavel's wine club. Uh, and so you can do that too. I think they even give you a 10% discount if you join. Um, and I'll include that link below. But I have other wine stuff to talk to you about. And I know there's, there's some people out there in my audience who do not agree that wine is alcoholic and I have done videos on the on that in the past uh, there's a couple of videos I can recommend to you um, one is called wine and the Bible uh, it's in my playlist on my YouTube channel you can find that and there's also one called uh, I believe alcohol comments really good where I talk about the verses in Isaiah 25 verse 6 for those of you who believe that wine was not alcoholic I am here to tell you that the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to include alcoholic wine. And for those of you who do not believe uh, that eating meat will will take place, some of you guys are you know just hardcore vegans. You know you can't eat meat. The marriage supper of the Lamb will include alcoholic wine and the meat and fat of animals. Isaiah twenty five verse six gives the menu for the marriage supper of the Lamb, and Isaiah twenty five verse six gives you. The, the man of honor who will be Yeshua. We have waited for our Yeshua, our salvation. Because it's going to be about him. It's going to be about our Messiah, our salvation. 
<laughs> the marriage supper of the lamb will include alcoholic wine and it will include meat. And so I talk about that in that video, alcohol comments, which is basically a response to all the comments that I got from that alcohol in the Bible uh, video that I posted up a couple years ago. So watch those videos, great videos. But I have more wine information to talk about with you today. So um, I have uh, went to the store. See, normally last year, and some of you guys who are in my area, we went last year to uh, a vineyard that's not far from the house, not far from the homestead, uh, and they got like 90 acres of different grapes that they grow. They grow Concord, they grow uh, the Muscat, which is a Muscato grape, and they grow a number of different grapes, uh, all for winemaking or juice making. They sell to a number of wine producers and juice makers in the area, and there's actually a lot of wineries in our area um, a little bit further south, but this place, I believe, grows them for a lot of juice and winemakers. And there's 90 acres, and, and they allow... The guy who owns it is a believer, and he allows church groups, church groups only, to come and and pick off his vineyard. And obviously, he charges for that. He gives you, um, you know, a certain amount. He weighs them, and then he charges you uh, for those for those grapes. And so, um, uh, I didn't go this year because just circumstances, so many things going on, we couldn't go, and and so. Um, I decided to do something different. Last year I made, I, I, we basically picked the Concord grapes and I made about 30 bottles, 30 bottles of wine that uh, were bottled this year. I did a video on that on the Homestead channel. And so me and a friend, John Wiles, we bottled those, uh, those, those uh, bottles, about 30. I think it was like 30 bottles, I think. Maybe a little less, 28, 29, 30 bottles, something like that. All of Concord grape wine and true wine when you make it, it's always going to be a dry wine. Uh, the sweet wines that you make today um, are stopped with a chemical process uh, that stops the fermentation, and then they add back in sugar to sweeten the wine. Because the way you make wine is with a yeast, and yeast will continue to eat the sugar until there's no sugar left. And so if you basically, all these vehicles moving around me, they're probably all wondering why I'm talking to myself and, and being so animated in my car. Um, usually when we see people like that, we think they're on meth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> we're in the country, folks. Um, well, where I'm at, where I'm where I live, I'm in the city now. But anyway, so I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> we um, we uh, made a bunch of wine, and um, I didn't get to go this year just because of circumstances and get grapes. And the wine picking season is just about over, or it's definitely over by now. So I want to make some wine. I want to have a vintage every year. And just because of my own consumption, I make my own wine. And, and I want to have wine for... I'm sick of buying wines over at the stores because most of the wines today are owned by a bunch of conglomerates. And they're chemically altered today, meaning that they're the same every year because they want to put out... The corporations want to put out a consistent product. And if you read that book that I've mentioned before in videos called Cork Dork, Cork Dork. It's a good book, very, very, very entertaining. I think it was a New York Times bestseller. Cork Dork talks about how the conglomerates and these major corporations are buying all these major, all these wineries, even the small family wineries, and they're chemically altering the wines to be consistent year after year. And that's not how a true wine is made. A true wine is different every year. The vintages are different every year. So you pick up a 2000 you know, 16 vintage, it's going to be different than a 2014 vintage, okay? Um, based on climate, based on the weather that year, uh, based on a whole number of factors. And so that old saying that, you know, you pick up a wine and someone replies, oh yeah, that was a really good year. It's because every year is different. It's supposed to be. Well, wines aren't that way anymore. And so um, true wines will be different. Now, so what I did today... I've never done this before. I've never done this before. But I did, I've heard of other people doing it. And I've heard how easy it is. And so I'm going to try it this year. Because I want my 30 bottles you know, of wine to put up this year. And the 30 bottles that me and John did for the video that we bottled this year, those are going to be in storage for about a year. And then I'll start to open them up and then try them and see how they work. Because you, you want to let them rest for a year inside the bottle. Um, especially because the ones I made last year... I picked the grapes, we picked the grapes, I crushed the grapes, I did a video on that as well. And because the skins were included when in that crushing, it has a higher acidic taste. And so it needs a year for that acid to mellow out. Well, this is gonna be a little bit different. This would probably be, probably be ready to drink closer to um, six month period. But 
I bought like five of these things, uh, maybe four, four or five of these things. Plus, always, I always throw in a, a bottle of pure 100% grapefruit juice when I do wines. It, it gives, you know, when I do wines um, uh, uh, that aren't, um, even when I do other wines, different things like that, I always throw in a bottle of grapefruit juice. It adds a, just a really good flavor for your wine. But I've never done this before where I actually did the, the Welch's uh, bottled grapes. I've never done this. So I'm going to try it this year. So I bought like four or five of these things along with a bottle of grapefruit juice. Um, I think they ran, I bought all the ones they had on the shelf. And then I bought this one, it's a black cherry Concord grape. Um, so I'll throw that in there too. And then I went to, there's a local brew shop in town and I bought some of the wine yeast. Um, and, and we'll see how that, I bought a couple packets of that. And so I am gonna put up my 30 bottles. Now this will ferment I'm going to probably put it together on Sunday, and then uh, it'll ferment over the next six to eight months. Okay, and I'll rack it a number of times into different carboys, and then I will bottle it uh, probably next summer, uh, early summer, late spring. Um, that's when I'll bottle it. So it'll have a good amount of time to ferment because it's going to ferment naturally. I'm not going to be using any chemicals to stop the fermentation process. If you go out and you buy a kit today and you do a, you do winemaking the modern way, they're going to use a number of sulfites um, and other things to stop the, the fermentation process. And a lot of people don't like those chemicals. They don't want those chemicals in their wine. I don't want the chemicals in my wine. I want to try to do it as naturally as possible. And there is quickly approaching a day my friends. When I do it the biblical way, I believe it's Mark 2.22. Mark 2.22, this shows you that our Messiah not only knew that alcohol was in the wine, but he participated in it himself because he talks about a, a, a parable of the wine bottles or the, the wine skins. And that's because they would take animals, they would case what's called case skin an animal, and they would ferment the wine inside the skin of that animal. That's why Daniel wouldn't drink the wine in the book of Daniel when the kings, you know, gave when the king gave him the wine and food. The food was unclean and the wine was unclean because traditionally a lot of countries, and Spain was one of these countries, they would use pork uh, pig skins, cased skin pigs, and they would ferment the wine in those. Uh, that would be unclean. I don't know what the animals were that they were using in Babylon when Daniel was there, but it makes sense. It would have been an unclean animal because Daniel didn't want to drink the wine. Uh, that To me, that would make the wine unkosher. I don't know about you, but for me. Anyway, so I there is coming a day where I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to take a sheep and or a goat and I will case skin it and I will prepare that for fermentation on my own. You know, I'm, I'm good enough at butchering and skinning animals that I could try that process and do it really that way with no chemicals. Um, the only, if you watched my videos before, I have videos out there on tips for winemaking. Uh, the number one tip, the reason they were able to make wine in the past was um, they kept, they used boiling water to, to sanitize everything. Bo hot boiling water will sanitize everything and uh, you can make a good wine with just boiling water. Today they use lots of chemicals, lots of soaps, and I don't use any of those. Or I try, it, it, the most I've ever used in the past was Star Sands, was one soap that I used. Uh, but today I don't really even use that. Uh, I just use boiling water for everything. Um, and uh, that's what I'll do when I case skin an animal and I will make wine the old fashioned way. Um, by harvesting the grapes like I did last year. I couldn't do it this year, but last year, harvested all the grapes, stomped them with my feet. I did a video on that and um, fermented the wine. And I will try to do it in an animal skin uh, at some point, the way they did it. Mark 2.22, that's exactly how they did it. When the wine skins would burst, because when the yeast eats the sugars of the fruit, it produces carbon dioxide uh, and it basically enlarges the, the, the leather of, of the animal skin to almost the bursting point and then it begins to collapse after the fermentation is done that's how you know it's finished and you can't do it a second time that story that parable alone proves that our messiah knew how to make wine and it proves that it was fermented isaiah 25 6 proves that wine was fermented because i mean even the last supper 
proves the wine was fermented because you can't harvest grapes in the fall and then drink the wine in the spring. It doesn't last, drink, drink the juice in the spring. It doesn't last that long. You have to preserve it. Alcohol from created by the yeast eating the sugars is the preservation method, is the preservative. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite topics because, and, and, and people who challenge me on this, I, I challenge them to say, I say, hey, listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to Harvest some grapes one fall or, you know, in the summer, in August, July, whenever you bring do the harvest of the grapes. Harvest those grapes and see if you can keep that juice good enough to drink without refrigeration, without, you know, modern packaging, without pasteurization. You see if you can keep that juice good enough to drink until Passover. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> it ain't going to work. All right. The only way you can do it is with alcohol. Anyway, thought I'd do that video today. Um, I'm at uh, the store waiting for Jamie. She's in to, she had to stop by Joanne's Fabrics to get some uh, things for homeschooling. Um, so we're in town today doing that along with the clinic um, that she is going to for her some of her treatments, vitamin C treatments. And so we're getting ready to head back as soon as she's done here at the store. So anyway, I thought I'd do that video. Link in the description below for the Hyavel Wine Club if you want to join that. I'm definitely going to try that out. And uh, we'll look forward. I'll, I'll try to put some pressure on Chris over at Shalom Makers. I believe the YouTube channel is still there. I'll try to put some pressure on him to make a video for you. All right. Believe it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks. Thanks.